What is going on everybody? Hey Von Chang here back again with another Pokemon trading card game on my deck tech. Today I'm going to be playing a fan favorite deck and probably my favorite deck, Maridon EX. This deck, you would think that it would fall off after we lost Flaffy with the rotation, Evolving Skies, you know, it's no longer able to be played. But Maridon, I think, is better than ever. With the insane performance that Gardevoir has had at the North American International Championships and even the insane performance Lost Box has had, Maridon is a great matchup into both of those decks because you can use a turn one Iron Hands extremely easily and then you can use another Iron Hands and finish the game off with big hitters like Raichu or use Raikou or even attack with your Zapdos if you really need a single prizer. This deck is insanely strong right now and I've been absolutely loving it. Now, all these cards are about the same as what you would expect. We've got our Squawkabilly, our Mew, but we have a couple of the new ones in here. We have a Tatsugiri from Twilight Masquerade, which makes this deck 10 times more consistent because you can attach a rescue board to it. And then from there, you'll be able to search for supporters in the active spot then retreat. And that's gonna easily help us find our three copies of bosses orders. We also have Iron Bundle in here, which is another area where Maridon really had trouble with. After we lost the escape rope, people were playing Maridon, and then if the Charizard EX was just thrown in the active, you couldn't actually remove it to take any KOs on smaller Pokemon with Iron Hands or on something like a Pidgeot EX. And that's where Iron Bundle comes in. We have Radiant Greninja for some additional draw over here. And in terms of our deck, it's all gas, no breaks. We're rocking a 4 3 3 line of Research, Arvin, and Boss. We've got four of those generators, a Super Rod to help us add some more energies back into the deck, as well as that Prime Catcher for some aggressive gust. We have the four electric generators, as well as two rescue boards to make sure we can retreat effectively. We also have one Vitality Band in here, and this is very important for the Raging Bolt Ogre Pond matchup because the Vitality Band plus Zapdos will let us do 240 damage and KO a Raging Bolt EX. In terms of our energies, we've got a whopping 15 Lightning and two Double Turbo. This list has won me an insane amount of games. You can very easily dong people, you're super consistent, and you have a really, really strong, aggressive game plan where you can just kind of overwhelm your opponent and just take advantage of these setup decks. We're gonna hop right into the video and get some dubs with Maridon. Just wanted to give a quick thank you to the lovely sponsors of the Hitmon Channing channel. If you need codes, you know where to go. Head over to ptcglstore.com and use code Hitmon to get 5% off your order. And be sure to check out Pokemon.gg, the best Pokemon card tracker and deck builder there is. Join Pokemon.gg by clicking the link below and use code Hitmon to get a free month of pro membership. Thank you to my sponsors for supporting the channel and thanks to you for supporting me too. And now let's get right back into the video. Hopping into the first game, our opponent has called the coin flip here, and it's going to be Tails, which means we get to choose to go second. This deck always wants to go second no matter what, because turn one attacking, or turn two attacking, I should say, like on the first turn of your game, is just so important to succeed with this deck. So you're really going to want to abuse that as much as possible with Maridon. We get a mulligan, and we get a kind of mid uh, opening hand. I'm not the biggest fan of this. But we'll lead the Mew EX here, see what we're up against. And I want to just ride on, and I want to probably power up a Raikou. We can retreat into the Raikou as well, and that will enable us to start, at the very least, um, powering some things up. We can also just draw some cards with Fleet Footed. That's kind of my main thing. We're up against Dragapult, which again, really good matchup. Maridon has an insane matchup spread this time around because we can just overwhelm this Dragapult deck. Now our hand's not that great, but we can thin our hand down a bunch, or if we get something like a generator, we could potentially knock out this Rotom in a single go because they're probably gonna go for a second Buddy Buddy Poffin. And as long as we maintain that 2-2-2 prize mapping, we should be good to go. Now our opponent's gonna attach that fire energy they're gonna retreat, that makes sense, force us to have a lot more to take a big KO on their Pokemon, and then it's just gonna be an instant charge, most likely. Now the boss here means we can bring that Rotom back up if we really, really wanted to, but we need a lot more in this hand than just some Pokemon. Yeah, we're gonna be able to restart for one, I think, and it's gonna be tough. We're gonna, it's gonna be a tough go, but we'll start off with that tandem unit, gonna grab us that Raikou and another Maridon here. See, the thing is, is with all these Pokemon in our hand, am I really even going to try? Like, am I going to attempt to go for a, um, you know, like, am I going to really want to go for a turn two Raikou because then they can respond with Dragapult? I might as well. I think I should just go, like, as much as I can, bring that in here. Um, yeah, I'll boss up the Rotom still. 
restart for one because if it's a generator i can still take a ko on it it's a town store which could be helpful here we'll see if we have our forest seal stone if we do we do the forest seal stone this could actually be insanely strong for us right now we're gonna put this forest seal stone on the raikou and use star alchemy and this is going to allow us to grab ourselves an electric generator and we can go ahead and hopefully ko this rotom we're gonna be doing i think what is that we're gonna be doing 210 right now hopefully we hit some lightning we do hit two which is exactly what we want and put one on the raikou and put another one on the iron hands ex we can retreat this mew and even with a little bit of a clunky start we're able to get this ko on this rotom we'll draw the heavy baton which is really really strong here um i will throw this on the iron hands and we'll just lightning rondo to take the first two prizes of the game now they can respond immediately with Rare Candy Pidgeot, Rare Candy Dragapult, but that's fine. Because what we'll want to do is respond to that by boss KOing the Pidgey, and, or Pidgeot. And we can do that with the help of our Prime Catcher. Another card that's been making Maridon so strong is the ability to go boss and then research Prime Catcher. And through that, you're able to just do so much damage to your opponent. The town store here, probably not gonna do a whole lot. They're gonna be able to grab something like a defiance band, which is why I put this um, heavy baton on the iron hands, but they opted to grab a um, TM devolution. Probably just the ultra ball fodder this away. Now they need a quite a bit. They need rare candy Pidgeot, rare candy Dragapult, Neo upper energy. They need a five card combo out of a seven card hand, which they should have pretty reasonably. There's the Pidgeot, they just need three more cards of this five to be good they have access to a supporter still that instant charge is just so strong on the first turn of the game and it's very possible they can instantly respond to our raikou and then we're going to be on the back foot a little bit trying to instantly respond by KOing that pidgeot that's going to be kind of my game plan here um just go over the 222 prize map or we can go ahead and start using iron hands something else that i'm going to be looking to do is utilize his bravery charm to stop him or ride on from getting instantly ko'd by a defiance band dragapult so we're gonna see that there's the arvin coming through and now the arvin can grab them the rare candy and let them get that um Dragapult into play here. Something else that could be really good is the Iron Bundle. Once we have our board set up, but they're actually going to grab a Counter Catcher. That's an interesting call. Counter Catcher the Iron Hands, potentially. It is a Counter Catcher on the Iron Hands. Now, they are going to be going for a bit of a slower game plan. However, if we're able to draw the Arvin at any point in this, you know, in this hand, we should just be able to bring up that Pidgeot and KO it. Another thing they could do here is Rare Candy the Dreepy. But they're just going to petty grudge for 10 damage. It's not really going to be relevant for us right now. Again, not having access to that Neo Upper Energy has hurt them a lot. We get Squawk Ability, which isn't super relevant. But we can Town Store here. And Town Store will let us get a Rescue Board. Now, I'll grab the Rescue Board so I can throw it on the Zapdos. So the same thing doesn't happen again. We have, what is that? One, we basically have two outs to switching here. Um, which we could pretty reasonably get. But, I don't know, it's still going to be really tough. We'll throw the Rescue Board on the Zapdos and the Bravery Charm on the Maridon. We can't use Mew here to find Arvin. That was going to be my goal, unfortunately. But, we'll go ahead and just use the Research. Research will grab us the Switch card. So, we're going to be able to potentially hit the uh, Dreepy with an Ampy very much. And that will probably lock up the game here. So we're just going to see what exactly we can do. We'll switch cart into Mew EX. We have one Lightning Energy in the discard, but it's probably worth putting back just to maximize our generator odds. Because if we can hit two energy, we should just win. We hit one, which is a little unfortunate. And that one energy on the Iron Hands. Because if I saved my attachment, could have used the double turbo. But I think playing it safe and getting that extra energy in play is still good because we have that heavy baton here. And now we could Ultra Ball. Maybe we should still do this. We can try and restart. We're going to whiff this Ultra Ball. We can restart trying to hit another generator. And if we can do that, we can lock up the game pretty easily here. We didn't hit it, but that's okay. I think I'll just retreat into the Iron Hands. And if the Iron Hands gets knocked out, preserving these energies is going to be really important. And then we'll just arm press for 170. Important thing, taking out the Dreepy with the energy on it. Um, I'm kind of, I'm pretty content with that. Now we're going after three prizes. If they play Roxanne, they can Roxanne us. But we have Mew EX in play to prevent that. Again, they're leading the Pidgeot. And the reason, again, I want to have this Iron Hands in the active, they need Rare Candy, Dragapult, Neo Upper Energy. And they have the Rare Candy, Dragapult. 
They can get the Neo Upper Energy from the Quick Search, but they'll also need a Lost Vacuum in order to actually be able to, um, what's it called? In order to be able to take out the Iron Hands with the Heavy Baton, but they actually opted not to do any of that. And now we have this insane Iron Hands EX in play with like three energy on it. It can knock this Pidgeot out. And because my opponent's been having such a slow start, they haven't been having a lot going on. They can use Pidgeot and see like, you know, if they go for a counter catcher play, we have the energy to retreat literally anything. They could get a bigger side with Buddy Buddy Poffin, but as long as we're able to find a way to, um, you know, as long as we're able to find a way to kind of just take another two prizes, we should just have this game guaranteed K, like we should just have a guaranteed win here. Um, now, the, another important thing about having the fully powered up Iron Hands is if they decide to retreat to Rain Alakazam, we could actually go ahead and attach and use MP very much to KO the Alakazam because of the Zapdos on our bench. Now, they are hitting us pretty hard with that Dragapult and that is a okay with me. We'll start off with the Town Store. Town Store will let me get another Rescue Board or a Vitality Band. Vitality Band isn't the most relevant right now, but it will be helpful for Raichu later on. So I'm gonna save that, throw this over here. I think I'll attach the energy probably to the Zapdos. They're pretty, I doubt it's on their radar. And we'll use Generator to get one more energy, and I think I'll put that on the, um, on the Maridon here. Now we can Mew, and if we find Energy Boss, we should just win the game. We did find Energy Boss, or it actually doesn't matter. But from here, we'll still go for an Arm Press, and the Arm Press will allow us to hit this Dragon Ball really hard. We'll save all these energies, and then hopefully if we can find our last Electric Generator, we can go for a big KO with Raichu at the end of the game. The thing is, they do have Pidgeot EX as their, you know, as a support Pokemon on the bench, and if they decide to play something like a, um, what's it called? If they decide to play something like a Professor Turl, they're not going to be able to attack with the Dragapult this turn. So I'm expecting um, just to hit into this Iron Hands. They can quick search and find a Lost Vacuum, which would be something that's really difficult for us to deal with. But because they've had such a slow start, we can confidently just KO this Dragapult with Raikou V, power up a Maridon on the bench, then we just boss the Pidgeot for game. Or we can also utilize Iron Bundle here if they decide to not KO the Iron Hands EX. That's another option. Now, if they are going to be grabbing another Dragapult EX here, no, they're going to grab the Dracloak, which is much better for us. Because now, like I said, if they decide to um, not KO the Iron Hands here, we can attach Nest Ball for Bundle, and Bundle will enable us to bring anything up, and we get a guaranteed KO. So I have a feeling they'll probably still KO Iron Hands here, and if they quick search for a Lost Vacuum, that makes a lot of sense. But we have a lot of energy in play, and like I said, we're just one boss away from winning this game, pretty much. So keeping the energy spread out is really important here, and I don't think it's going to be an issue. The Jamming Tower coming out is going to be an issue, though, because it stops all of our tools from working. Now, they're going to be able to start spreading some damage onto this Zapdos, and then KOing the Zapdos will be a little bit tragic. Again, we are losing these energies, no heavy baton. Jamming Tower is pretty clutch for them. But from here, we're hopefully gonna be able to get a Raichu, attach to the Raichu and just say, look, we need one more energy and we basically win the game. So we'll lead with Mew EX here and we can try and kind of find a way out of this. Another lightning energy, we can actually just Nest Ball and Nest Ball can grab us. I was gonna say Raining Greninja, but we don't have Raining Greninja access right now. Um, I think I will still grab a Raichu, or I can grab another Iron Hands, and I can threaten the last Iron Hands. The problem is with one generator left and no Heavy Baton, I want to save that generator for our Raichu. So, I will burn this Nest Ball, and I'm going to attach to Maridon here. Just so we have some variety, they can use, you know painful spoons to move some of these energies around and i think i'll go ahead tandem unit will grab me the uh, raichu for later on they can ko the raichu but they're not gonna be able to take a multi ko and now i will just restart for a single card that'll be an arvin which is going to be really clutch for sure the arvin can enable me to take out that pidgeot ex right now and then i just need to take a single another single prizer to win the game but I'm actually kind of confident in saving the Arvin because if I save the Arvin, I literally just need, you know, they can take out maximum three energies from us. I just need to be able to prime catcher that Pidgeot 
win the game from there. I'm taking up the Dragapult threat that they currently have. I'm more of a fan of that play, so I'll do this. We'll retreat. We can Fleet Footed. We're going to do 230 with that Raikou. We get the boss, too, which is really interesting, but I think I'm okay just keeping this hand the way it is. And we'll just Lightning Rondo for the KO. Now, I'm setting them up to KO this Ra uh, Raikou V. They can KO the Zapdos on the bench, removing three energies from play. But we do have access to our last generator. I wouldn't be surprised if we got Iono as well. And that Iono will put some more energies in the deck. We can shuffle it up in certain ways with the tandem unit ability. And we'll be A-OK -okay to go here. Now, yeah, they're leading the Pidgeot. I can suspect 100% that they're going to be able, or they're going to want, anyway, to utilize a um, hand disruption here. And the thing is, they can take out Mew, but then we just have to boss. They're going to attach to Dracloak. So I'm anticipating a Mela here, which should just guarantee us the game. But we'll see what happens. There's a Dragapult. Yeah, because the no Neo upper energy means that they're just relying on Mela 100%. Yeah, they're definitely just thinning their hand incredibly to grab this Mela um, and use it. There's the Mela. They're going to fill their hand. Awesome. They can go ahead and do that. But unless they have an unfair stamp, I'm assuming Neo Upper, they might have an unfair stamp to work with. Another Pidgeot in the active, um, or on the bench. Yeah, I didn't anticipate an unfair stamp from them. That could be a problem. Again, we have a lot of our energy in play. I'm seeing this Quick Search hasn't even been used yet. They've only got eight cards left in deck. So we'll see what we can do here. Maybe it's an unfair stamp angle, which I don't think is the best card for Dragapult, especially even with Pidgeot. Um, I think you're just not as consistent, but maybe they're proving me otherwise here. The Mela plus unfair stamp could be really, really clutch. Another Dragapult EX, I think just trying to, um, like they're fearing the Iron Bundle play, which makes a lot of sense. But for now, um, yeah, we're just basically gonna need to hit the generator. That's the thing, we gotta hit that generator and but they're actually not opting to KO the Zapdos, which is a little bit odd, leaving all these energies in play. And that basically just means the Arvin with the generator will allow us to, like, if we hit an energy, allows us to win because we can also get Vitality Band. So we'll lead Mew EX here and see what we can do. Another Arvin is good. That's, I'm kind of debating. We don't have that many energies left in the deck. Basically, all we need to do here is we need to Arvin and grab Generator plus a um, Vitality Band. That'll let us do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 300, 310. Oh, but the Jamming Tower in place stops that from happening. Oh, man. We need to hit two off the Generator here. But I think the best way, we'll start with a Tandem Unit. We could go for the Bundle Play, but the Bundle Play doesn't really guarantee us anything. Yeah, it's really going to need to be... It could also get Lost Vacuum Vitality Band. But again, we have our energy spread really thin, which is now an issue. How many energies do we have in the deck? We have four energies in the deck. I think I'm safe to Radiant Greninja here. There's no chance we hit four energies. It's pretty unlikely. We hit the Generator, which is really, really clutch here. Because if the Generator hits, we can Arvin or Boss for game. We just need to hit one, pretty much, off this generator. And I think we should Arvin first, right? We Arvin first, we hit one off the generator, it goes on any Pokemon and we win. Arvin will just thin more cards out of the deck, so we'll absolutely do that. Get the Prime Catcher and the Vitality Band. We've got 15 cards in the deck. Can we hit it? We hit <laughs> three energy, so it doesn't even matter. We can just Power Ride you up fully for the full extent of the damage here. And this is going to be able to do this one, two, three, four, five, six is enough to do 370 damage and KO this Dragapult by discarding every energy on the board. I mean, we, 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 I think we played that really well. We were able to take advantage of their slower start. And again, that's the problem with Dragapult Pidgeot is that you're not able to consistently get those turn two attacks, especially they must have had Neo Upper Prize or something. But man, that was a little bit of a rough go for our opponent. And Maridon takes a dub. Our opponent is calling the coin flip. They chose Tails, never fails. But for me, heads always shreds, baby. <laughs> Woo!
we're gonna get to choose to go second here and like Maridon always does you want to get that turn one KO the electric generator luck is in the air and we're gonna go ahead and start this game off we got an absolutely busted opening hand we have essentially a turn one KO in our hand which is really really nice but we'll have to just see what happens here there is the Charmander Looks like we're playing up against a Charizard deck, or at this point, you don't even know. You could be playing against Charizard Dragapult. That's another option here. There comes the Entei V, which is pretty bad for us because Entei um, can easily respond to our Maridons, but it's pretty easy for us to respond to Entei. So I'm not the most concerned here. We do have to get a turn one Iron Hands to make this worthwhile though, or we need to get a turn one Prime Catcher on this Entei. So we'll see what we can come up with. We have Nest Ball to get a Squawk to reset the hand. They are gonna get rid of Iono and Charmeleon and probably get the Rotom V. Now the Rotom V, another great target for us to boss around in the Charizard matchup. You don't even wanna go for Charizards. They definitely have an Arvin in their hand because they got rid of the Iono. That is a certainty for me. So they are gonna get the turn two Charizard. Luckily for us, we have a very high shot of getting a turn two or turn one hands. We can get Squawk from here. And yeah, we just want a tandem unit. Tandem unit will grab us the hands and another Maridon. And now from here, Maridon can get us the remainder of our important cards. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead, we'll grab Raikou and Zapdos are probably good here. I think I'm fine with both of those. Raichu we can get a little bit later. Bravery Charm, I think I'm gonna put this here. I'll definitely attach the double turbo. Hopefully the generator hits. Hit one, we still gotta hit one generator to do anything noteworthy here. But I think I wanna put the charm on the iron hands because then it can't be return KO'd very easily. Uh, we'll squawk and seize, give me that other generator. We got no other generator, but we did get a seal stone. Now the seal stone can help us out here. Let's nab that seal stone. We gotta use the seal stone, we gotta use, just hit another generator. That's like the only way we have um what's it called we don't even have we do have the heavy baton this generator needs to hit please generator i believe okay the generator came came to show up to work today we can throw this energy on um probably i want to put it on this maridon i think raikou will be fairly easy to power up so later on we'll go for the boss ko on the Entei. Here though, we can actually boss KO the Pidgeot right away. And that, it's not the worst thing in the world because they'll need a lot to be able to actually respond to this Iron Hands here. So maybe I'll do that and then we can aim for a Prime Catcher later on. I actually am not a huge hater of that idea. Get rid of this Pidgeot because either way they're gonna have a Charizard. So might as well get rid of their support Pokemon. That way they're not gonna be able to get the busted combo that will immediately like turn off this Iron Hands is usability. We get the second hands from the prizes, which could be good. Now I anticipate they'll lead an Entei here if they have nothing. All right, anticipation, correct. Um, they're definitely gonna wanna lead this Entei. Fleet Footed can get them another card and that will help them out a little bit in establishing the rest of this board here. Seven cards is a lot to work with when all you need is rare candy Charizard plus a Switch. They have the Arvin, which I already knew, so they can get that four seal plus rare candy or ultra ball and allow them to build up their board here. But the good thing is because we pre-attach to Maridon, we can use Maridon, attach and a, use an electric generator to be able to knock this Entei out because it's got 230, but we're gonna be doing just enough. They have the rare candy and the seal stone, so they have the Charizard, but I wouldn't be surprised if they go rare candy, Charizard, attach two to Entei and a one to the Charizard and then go for a counter catcher on something like the Squawk. That wouldn't surprise me either because then they're leaving this Entei in the active and you're forcing me to find something like a boss's orders or something like a, um, what's it called? And something like a generator to be able to KO this uh, Entei V. They could honestly just like, like now they could find a vacuum with that seal stone and still KO my hands, um, that's another possibility that they could do uh, for sure. But they are leaving the Entei in the active, right? So leaving the Entei in the active means that I have another easy two prize KO if I'm able to play my cards right, pretty much. Um, we should have something going here. I wouldn't be surprised if, yeah, they hit us with the counter catcher. They could counter catcher that Maride on counter catcher. Um, is a little that sucks actually because now we don't have an easy way to retreat we can lead the raikou though because we do have the switch cart and the thing is 
we, we have another rescue board for this exact reason. This Raikou can also KO the Entei, though. So it's a important, you know, it's a balance, right? It's a balance of figuring out what we want to do here. I think getting the extra draw off the Raikou is good because we don't have a Tatsugiri in play just yet. And the Raikou will, of course, give us another energy. And now I think the Tatsugiri is important that we put into play, but let's give the deck a shuffle and see what our outs are. We can also, uh, you know, attach Vitality Band to this Maridon. We're not going to get Raichu just yet. It's not that important. Um, we have a lot of ways to maneuver here. Prime Catcher could also be really, really strong at being able to get rid of this Pidgey again. Then they can't remove two liabilities from play, and then we should be good as gold. So an Arvin will get us there. So I will just fail that Maridon. I will throw the Tatsu down, and I will go for a Fleet-Footed play. Fleet-Footed will get me a research. So let's see. Let's see what we can do here. I'll start with a Switch Cart into the Tatsugiri. If we get Arvin here... I'll be a happy camper. Got boss. I don't want to get boss here because then I'm going to get be discarding it. So from here, we're basically just banking on the prime catcher play. Or we need to hit a, uh, you know, we got to hit a rescue board generator combo. If we got the rescue board, we didn't get the generator, which is really, really tough for us. We can use the town store to get the rescue board now, right? But the thing is, if they just go boss again, we're going to be in a, like, terrible, terrible spot. So I'm thinking maybe, do I even want to put the Iron Hands in the active? I could just hit it really hard, right? Like, I could just smack it um, with the Tatsu gear, with the hands. Then I can, I can threaten three prize KO if I just hit it for 100 um, or 110 then i can't even threaten a three prize ko no i can yeah i can just hit it with the amp yeah this is what i'll do i am going to go into the hands risky play but i'm going to arm press for 150 and i can threaten koing this ente for three prizes now if they just have a boss it might as well be ggs because they have a charizard established but we'll just see if they have a candy pidgey they have the boss then we're kind of just cooked here um there's a fire energy on the bench to charmander there's not a whole lot they can do no counter catchers are active so that's a good thing. They're going to be able to town store. Nothing should be super relevant here, though. Um, just them thinning. Yeah, TMD was not going to do too much. Us whiffing that crucial Arvin on that specific point was really tough. There's an Iono here. So we should be okay. We each can get four-card hand. Then we can threaten the amp here. They're, this is a decent hand, too, for being iono There's actually no way where this Entei is going to be able to KO this Iron Hands. So that's what's really, really strong here. Um, because if they hit into me, I'm not even at threat of being lost vacuumed away to get KO'd. Like, that's not even a threat. They're just going to instant charge, which I think is the right call. There's no need to go for a hit here um, because I'm just going to be able to do some nasty, nasty things with this Iron Hands Ampy very much. Now, this is where things get a little bit dicey. We've already played two generators. Um, they're going for the instant charge. We could knock out the Rotom, but I just want to save the Prime Catcher. And we'll Town Store. Heavy Baton would be really clutch here, but we'll just get it out of the deck. We don't have to attach it anywhere just yet. And we'll hit him with the Generator. We won't hit anything off the Generator, which isn't too great. But we will be able to attach to this Maridon, and we can just go ahead and amp you very much. So amp you very much is going to just do 110 damage to that Entei. And it will knock it out. Letting us take three prize cards. And the best thing about this is we need boss for game. Because we didn't use our prime catcher. Boss for game is one of our many Arvins that was prized. Or one of our boss's orders that we have. And we have a Tatsugiri to be able to find that card very easily. Now they're going to lead the Charizard. Sure, use your Charizard to do whatever you want. Rare Candy, Pidgeot. Nothing here matters really. The only way... Yeah, so now basically, if they don't Iono us or anything like that, we have a guaranteed win. They um, they will have to Iono us, but they're going to be going crazy with their rare candy Zards and all that stuff. Um, we just got to wait and see basically what they decide to go ahead and do here. I definitely see this Iron Hands getting knocked out because then we're a guaranteed boss away from game. Um, the Zapdos is coming in super clutch right now. Um, just chilling there because he's my guy. Um, but yeah, I can see this Iron Hands definitely getting KO'd. We just attached the Maridon. This Pidgeot is very likely going to want to hit a uh, Iono, and that's probably going to be like our biggest challenge because now we have both Arvins going to the bottom of the deck. 
The good thing though, is we can actually use Town Store to shuffle the deck again, and then Tatsugiri can look at the top uh, six cards. So that'll be fine for us to be able to actually, um, you know, get a good grip on what's going on here. There's a Defiance Band, which isn't really gonna do anything anymore. Um, it can allow Radiant Charizard to hit these Charmed Iron Hands, but it doesn't really matter. Here's a quick search, anticipating, I am anticipating the disaster that is gonna be an Iona 1 here. Yeah. However, we do have a lot of outs. Like I said, we can use the Town Store to shuffle. We can shuffle with Tandem Unit. Or we can just top deck boss and win the game. Because we're goaded with the sauce. Or I... Goaded with the boss. Get it? Come on. You know that was good. Anyway, here's a Burning Darkness for 360 damage. Saying goodbye to our Iron Hands, but it doesn't matter. Our Marion is prepped, he's primed, he's ready to go. And because we were able to charm the hands, I was going to get greedy and baton the hands, but charming the hands is really good too, especially when you can pull off that really strong play, which is lead Mr. Marion, boss's orders up the Pidgeot. Goodbye, Pidgeot. It wasn't that nice knowing you because I get the Photon Blaster for 480 damage, and then it gets KO'd. That's the great thing now with the Maridon into Zard matchup, is you're able to use Prime Catcher to be very, very aggressive, and it's just another out when you need it to go boss, boss, boss to win. You don't even have to KO with Charizard. And that's usually the best plan, is why am I gonna KO with Charizard? They need so much support to actually use the Charizard. I'm just gonna go around it. I've been absolutely loving Maridon right now, but I wanna know what you think. Like, comment, and subscribe to the Hitmon Channing channel because I post multiple Pokemon trading card game videos every single weekend. With all that said and done, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, Hitmon Channing, out.